Cattle Parish Commission work session agenda June 18th, 3.30. We'll order at this time. Roll call. Dominic. Present. Johnson. Present. Jackson. Lynn. Bowen, Present. Southorn. Gage Water. Present. Present. Middleton. Here. Atkins. Here. Chavez. Here, sir. Smith. Present. Lewis Johnson. Present. We have a quorum, sir. If we all can stand, I'll ask that Commissioner Lewis Johnson lead us in the invitation. And Commissioner John Atkins, if you can lead us in pledge. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, yes. Lord, we come before you now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy. We thank you for your gift of life. Lord, we now pray in Jesus' name that as we go forward that you would bless our efforts, O oh God. Yes. We pray, O oh God, that you would give us and put us on one accord. All that we say and all that we do will give you glory. Yes. Bless this commission, O oh God. Bless the citizens of this parish. Yes. Help us do that which is pleasing in your sight. Yes. This is our prayer in the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Please join me in facing the flag. Place your hand over your heart or render the proper military salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. I'd like to welcome everybody here today. Appreciate everybody coming out. Appreciate uh, Commissioner Lewis Johnson and Commissioner Atkins with helping us with the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance and we will move over to our next item, uh, Mr. Hopkins. Uh, any agenda additions? I have none. Do you have any? No, sir, I do not. All right, moving to citizens' comments. Citizens who wish to address the commission must fill out a comment card and forward it to myself or, uh, or the president of the commission or the clerk. Comments are limited to three minutes. Um, I have no card, so okay, I have one. Uh, Michael Corbin. Mr. Corbin, how are you doing today? Come forward in three minutes, sir. This will be on, we're going to most likely send this to a committee, so okay. go ahead. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Michael Corbin, uh, External Affairs Manager for SWEPCO. I'm here about an item on your agenda today in support of our Windcatcher Energy Project, uh, asking that you consider taking this up uh, today, if possible, uh, we gave a brief review of the uh, project at, uh, two weeks ago at the meeting. Uh, this is to allow SWEPCO to purchase part of a wind farm in Oklahoma and bring that electricity down for the citizens of Louisiana. Uh, we anticipate over $1.4 billion mm -hmm. of savings mm -hmm. for our customers in Louisiana. That comes out to about an average of 5% on a residential um, electric mm -hmm. bill. Uh, huge savings to our employers and it's also going to be a tool uh, to use for economic development. Uh, the reason I ask that you consider it at this time is simply because we go before the Public Service Commission Wednesday uh, and they're expected to take a vote on it. We need the approval of Louisiana, Texas, Arkansas and Oklahoma Public Service Commissions for this project because it involves each state. Uh, and uh, Arkansas has approved it. It's up, as I say, it's up for vote Wednesday at Louisiana Public Service Commission. If it's appropriate, I can take any questions or. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, uh, moving on to our next item. <clears throat> next, we have visitors, Mr. Michael Williams. How you doing, Michael? Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. First, giving praises to God Almighty. Mr. Chairman, and to all the distinguished commissioner, to the administration. Mr. Don't, don't get um, a new mic. You got to stand back just a little bit because it, it refers back right. into 10, it. 10,000 Christian Coast Street, Port Louisiana. Am I correct now? Sounds point? good. And uh, to all the ladies and gentlemen that are in the audience, uh, first of all, I want to say that I rise in the spirit of Jesus. And second, I want to rise to the podium in the spirit of justice. One of the reasons I'm here is because my conviction of the Holy Spirit led me here because of a situation that happened several years ago that many of you are very aware of. And I want, before I get started, I would like to read a scripture, Ecclesians 5. I heard the prayer, and I heard the Pledge of Allegiance. And the last part of the Pledge of Allegiance, it says, justice for all. And oftentimes I wonder, do I live in a country that call America, you know, we truly one nation under God. Because oftentimes I wonder, I served my country as a young man in the United States Army and I raised my hand. I came back to the community, very honorable, 
uh, making a commitment to make a difference in our community. And I joined the Shreveport Fire Department. So serving is in my DNA. And now that I accepted the Lord and Savior of Jesus Christ, now the blood runs warm in my body, and now I work for Jesus, not for Caesar. So I want to look at the scripture, Ecclesians 5. I'll be coming from the Amplified Version, chapter, verses 8. It said, don't be surprised if you see a poor person being oppressed by the powerful, and if justice is being miscarried throughout the land for every official is under order from God. He said every official is under order from God, and matters of justice get lost in red tape and bureaucracy. My brothers, my members, and members of this body, please uh, understand that I'm under a lot of burden because my mother has been diagnosed with stage four cancer, and she, right now she's at home resting with hospice. And also my fiance has stage two cancer. Unfortunate, the good news is uh, she's been cured and they got it all out. My brother is suffering from all type of hernia and other disease and don't know why. But I believe part of the problem has been all the stress and undue stress that's put on by what's happening and transpired over me over the last three years. If you had a loved one in the community you know has given his life, has given his liberty, has given his blood, has given all he had to make a difference in this community. And I have before you today a decision of the United States Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. And I have also an appeal regarding the restitution paying back to me. If you brief over, we'll get in discussion about that later. But as I sit and I sat there and I served my time and I went through the due process, I've been very humble, I've been quiet, I've been very graceful during this time of despair. I haven't said anything, I haven't even talked about it, but the convictions of my heart led me here to come today. As you notice, I'm just trying to, to make something that happened wrong right. I believe if you look at the transcript of the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeal, they overturned the restitution in my case because they said it wasn't a victim. That the cattle commission was not uh, 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 any uh, victim, and then it said Swag Nation was not even a victim of what my uh, uh, allegedly was indicted for is that I took money from children. And there's a certain sheriff in this town that got on public TV and said he took the money from the children. But as you see from the Fifth Circuit opinion, that was the money taken from nobody, Commissioner Milton. Nobody was a victim, not even Swag Nation. Not even Swag Nation never even filed any charges that I took anything from them. The Cattle Commission didn't file any charges that I took anything from them. But I made it up and paid restitution. And what happened when the Fifth Circuit came back, guess what? The Cattle Commission had to give me my money back because they was not a victim. Now, believe me, when you have someone been charged with a crime, Commissioner Lynn, that's got to be a victim. Because somebody got hurt by your damages, by your scheme, or by your conspiracy. What was this really all about? If it wasn't about Swag Nation, and it wasn't about the Catechal Mission, what was it really about? The very fabric of our Constitution holds to protect people like me that don't have money to fight the powerful. The very Constitution holds to protect, and the people that serve in office to protect people like me. The very third of our democracy, the very fabric of it is to protect people that are poor against the powerful and the rich. Unfortunately, it slipped and it failed in my situation. So this is where it all began and this is where it needs to end. As you look there and you look at me at your eyes, and if you was in my shoes and you got an opinion back from the Fifth Circuit, and you've been wrongly convicted of a crime based on the mischaracterized of the facts, what would you do? Would you want your reputation and your integrity to be restored? your name that you worked for all these years to make a difference in this community. But in spite of what all happened to me, I still love the people that hurt me. I still forgive those that I know wishfully ambushed me and mastermind this conspiracy and this plot. 
voted to get me out of office of District 3. And this led the people that I was taking from the children based on the facts, not the fiction. That never happened. That never happened. How would you feel? You served time for something you didn't do. You were wrong convicted of a crime, Commissioner Doug Dominic. And the facts are there. It's not about black and white. It's not about Republican. It's not about independence. It's about what's right versus wrong. And God has said in Cleveland that he's holding people that are official up high, and he sit high above you. He's holding you accountable to make the right decision, to make me whole again, to make my mother who's suffering from cancer, worried about her baby being in prison, to make her whole again. To make my fiance whole, to make my children, to make my family, to make the people of District 3 were misled to believe that Michael Williams took money from a program that helped poor children to turn their life around. And that never happened. That never happened. So I rise to this poem today, not out of anger, but out of spirit of justice, out of spirit of to be made whole again. A spirit where I could walk my head up in a country we call America. In a country that I believe the American dream is to still alive and well. But sometimes that dream falls on death's shoulder. I don't want to play the race card. I don't, I don't want to even bring race in my case. It's about uh, someone in office that has the right to public bully you when you don't conform to what they want you to do. That's a breach of the United States Constitution. That's what our forefathers fought for, so poor people can have a right of justice. Did you know there was a study done in, 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 in New Orleans, there was a study done that the uh, majority of the cases that are miscarriage and overturned because Louisiana is the capital of making mistakes and miscarriage and wrongly convicted people. There was a study done that Louisiana and New Orleans was ranked number one in the nation. It's not unusual for people to make mistakes because at the end of the day, they just want a conviction. They'll do anything they can to get a conviction. The people that got on the witness stand and testified against me all went to the same church. Even the prosecutor went to the same church with all the three witnesses. Bobby Jill Cooper, Ray Brown, Glenn Robinson, and the federal prosecutor all went to the same church. But by the grace of God, by the power and authority of God, God stepped in, went back and touched the appeal court judge's heart and recognize that this case was rigged from the very beginning. Because how could you have a murder if you ain't got no bodies? There's no bodies in my case. The only body you have is me and my family and the poor little children that I went out to try to help and the poor mothers that were black and white poor has no race. Race has no place in my case. What in my case, what we have here is a case of right versus wrong. And I need your help to write that wrong today for me. If you see it in your heart to see it, we can move forward and make this city one of the greatest city in America. We continue to do that. I still believe in Shreveport. In spite of all happening to me, I still love this city. I still believe there's hope for us to turn it around as we work together to make a difference for all the people in our city. Commissioner Lynn, you work with me. Commissioner Bowman, uh, Dominic, you work with me. When I say I didn't do something, and I look in your eye, I'm a man of my word. When I say I didn't do it, and I'm going to say it today, I didn't do it. I was framed for something that I didn't do. I want to be made whole. I want to be restored back to the man that people know in our community that who I am. And you have, a, you have the authority to do that. What I'd like to propose as we go forward is an opportunity to allow you to help me restore myself and my dignity in this community. <clears throat> I know what it's like to get a second chance because remember, Commissioner Stoner, we started a second chance initiative for people, for people that need a second chance, to transition back, trying to restore their dignity and their family, restore them back to their family, Commissioner Acton. We started that. Not now, I don't know we need it. <laughs> but you know, God has a, a prophesied in the vision for something like that. I was excited about that program like I am today. And it's turning people out, around and making them productive, law-abiding, tax-paying citizens. That's what they do. So well, what I, I hope that what's been said that you would help me start that recovery. Well, I won't be.
public intimidated because I speak out against injustice all my life. Social injustice, criminal injustice, economic injustice. I've been speaking about that all my life. Don't bully me and don't make me conform to your ways of thinking and doing just because I'm an independent thinker. That's not right. That is not the way the America was built. That's what, not the way our forefathers built and wrote the Constitution. We're supposed to be able to be free and speak we ought to be able to, be able to protest without repercussions, especially not going to jail. All because you speak your mind for what you believe. You wouldn't you rather have somebody speak their mind to you than lie to you? Get before here and say they with you behind that door, and when they get up here, they don't vote. Wouldn't that make you upset? I've been there. So the only victim in this case, and I don't mean to rehash and repeat myself, but it's, it's something I've been in my heart for the last three years, because I went to prison. I did my time. You haven't heard from me. I helped people in prison. The same thing I was teaching these kids. Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? I taught the same thing in prison. Etiquette to men that don't even know how to tie a tie. That's what I taught. I taught education. I was in education. I spent nine months at Polar, three months at a halfway house in Monroe, teaching and helping people. Leading men to Jesus Christ at Polar, 64 people got baptized that never confessed and gave their life to Christ. That's making a difference. See, my disaster you had here is not my destiny. <laughs> See, you may thought you were doing it for my bad, but God was doing it for my good. See, he took me out of politics and put me in the pulpit, but I had to go to prison. But I thank God for coming and rescuing me in prison to turn on this case all around. You gotta look at it, Michael Williams versus the United States of America. That's like David versus Goliath. But when God is for you, it doesn't matter who's against you. It's only by the grace of God, ladies and gentlemen, that I was able to receive the good news from the Fifth Circuit of Court. No victims. Now, I'm going to take that baton across the finish line, and I need your help. What I like for this commission to do, don't cost you nothing, but do what's right and do what's fair, based on what Ecclesiastic and 8 and 5 said, 5 and 8 said. And I ask you to read it in your spare time. Sponsor a resolution asking the governor to pardon me, to give me a, a, a pardon, a gold seal pardon, and ask him to send it to the to president to give me a pardon, to help me, to make me whole, to help me get exonerated, to help me get acquitted of something that I didn't do. If I did, I would took it, I would have went down and took my time like a man. I wouldn't be fighting some of that I didn't do. I wouldn't have did that. I just accept it and roll up my sleeves and take it. But if you was in my shoe, I think you would have fought too. It's so unfair that because of who I am and what I stood for, I had to go to prison. <coughs> Even Wiedemeyer, when he was uh, building a wall, he had opposition. When he was defending for the poor, he had opposition. Anytime you stand up for what is right, you're going to face opposition. Jesus faced opposition, the Pharisee, the Sadducee, and the government and they killed a senseless man. So it make me think that I ain't gonna suffer for standing up right. That just go with part of the territory of being a Christian. So I accept, I accept what happened to me and I hope that you can help change the direction of what happened to me and make it right and make me whole. Make the people of District 3 whole. Make my family whole. You have the facts in front of you. You have the opinion from the Fifth Circuit. Exonerate me and help me start my recovery and my reputation and my dignity and my integrity and restore me back to be the man I want to be. I still want to serve this community. I have a national global initiative called Campaigning for Souls. It stands for uh, Souls of Unsaved Lives. You can try all the policies you want, all the stuff you have, and I tried everything, y'all know me, and it haven't worked. If you want to change somebody, you got to change them on the inside and not the outside. That's the only way to change Shreveport is community already preaching, not community already policing. Now get out of our churches and connect with our young people, black, white, young and old, poor and rich. That's what God wants us to do. All this fighting we're doing in our city, all this confrontation we have about black and white and who live here, that ain't working. We got to get on one accord and turn back to God in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. If my people are called by my name, humble yourself and turn back then God will hear from, hear from heaven and heal the land.
All right? So I appreciate the opportunity you gave me. I thank you for allowing me this opportunity to vent a little bit. And I hope that uh, uh, whatever happened to me don't happen to you. Because nobody is immune to what's going on in Shreveport. And people that do this to you should be held accountable. Everybody should be held accountable for that action. Yes, you forgive, but Commissioner, they should be held accountable. Don't they hold you accountable? Don't you have to be transparent about what you do, Commissioner? So this is clearly a classic case of obstruction of justice. Had nothing to do with no conviction, had to do with no swag nation. They just wanted me out of politics. All right, and they camouflage it by using Swag Nation as a tool to get to me. Because clearly there was no victims. Nobody got hurt, but I got hurt. I lost my reputation, I lost my job, I lost a lot, I lost a lot of money because I tried to do right and help people. Bad business practice don't make you a crime, all right? Swag Nation was a for-profit organization honored to fulfill their contract, provided the service. The taxpayers got what they want. Every dime was spent on them kids. The taxpayers got what they want. Because they had a contract. They honored the contract. They was not a nonprofit. They was a for profit. Went through the chain of command, went through the process, and did what the honor with the contract said. All this other miscategorization of the fact, misled to believe, and people will believe in that. Now you can make your own professional opinion because those are the facts. Those are the facts on the Fifth Circuit of this Western District. So would you help me? Because most of y'all, I helped you when you needed me. Many of your careers got started because of Michael Williams. This is the day for you that you can reach, give back what was given to you, an opportunity to serve. So I'm asking that, that those of you who I helped, I'm not calling you by name, go on record. Let history know that I stood in a time of justice. I stood up when a time when it was unpopular. I stood up. It's easy to stand up in comfort. But where were you in discomfort? Where were you when there was naysaying? Where were you when there was negative? Where was you when there was opposition? And my closing remark before I go to my seat, one of my favorite, besides reading God's word and scriptures, is one of my favorites, and you know that, many of you know him, probably Dr. Martin Luther King. Yes, he had a dream, but I don't think his dream is what we see now. And it closed like this. It says, we need leaders not in love with money, but in love with justice. Mm. Not in love with publicity and posturing for the cameras, but in love with humanity. That's the kind of leader we need in the 21st century right now. Mm. May God be a blessing to this body. I'll be praying and watching and waiting for my restitution and my reputation in return. I need your help. God bless you. I respect you and the work you do. Thank you so much. Thank you, Commissioner. Any questions or comments? Nobody got nothing to say? I guess I, guess I said it all, huh? Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much. Right. And we're moving on to our next item. Next move to report, the administrative report. Uh, Dr. Wilson, do you have anything? Uh, yes, sir. We have three things, uh, President Dominique. We have an update from Ms. Angie White today on the ACT pro Work Program. On what? On the ACT Ready Program. Okay. And Ms. Angie, you want to come forward and give us an update, please? <clears throat> okay. Test the microphone. Is this a good distance? Mm -hmm. yeah. I think so, yes. Great. Um, good afternoon, everybody. And I'm uh, passing around a few handouts that I'll be referencing when I'm speaking so you know what I'm talking about. My name is Angie White. I'm the Senior Vice President of Workforce Initiatives for the North Louisiana Economic Partnership, although I'm here today representing a much larger group of organizations. Um, many of you, I think, were here when we first spoke about this um, several months ago. I believe it was in October or early November to um, uh, request a letter of support for the ACT Work Ready Communities Initiative that our four parish region of Caddo, Bossier, DeSoto, and Webster was um, planning to apply for. 
and um, we appreciate your letter of support. We are almost finished with the um, training period, for lack of a better term. Uh, we've completed three of the four academies that we have to go to to start the process of becoming certified work ready communities. Um, I wanted to make sure all of you knew that the public launch for this initiative is this Wednesday at 8.30 in the morning at the Bossier Civic Center. It is free to attend and the very first handout and what's being given to you is a, a flyer for that event. There's a registration link at the bottom. You can share it with anybody that may be interested or if you yourselves would like to come. We would love for you to be there. But that's our opportunity to talk to the community at large about this initiative and to um, introduce them to it and more importantly to put a call to action out to employers in our region because we really need them to know what this is. At that event we will also be introducing the new name for this initiative which will be North Louisiana Ready to Work. And the reason that it took on a larger geographic area since we've been going through this process, um, several community and technical colleges are part of our team and parishes that they cover outside of those four are asking, can they be part of this? Can they, how, how do they get involved? So we felt like it was probably going to grow over time and we wanted to get ahead of that. So we gave it a, a larger name than, than what we originally had. Mm -hmm. If you look at the first, the second page of what I handed out, you can see the number of um, organizations that are participating. And actually since we um, put that list together, we've had meetings with Volunteers of America and Career Compass of Louisiana, who I think also will be become part of this team. Um, we've also been having some really positive sounding conversations with the Northwest Louisiana Reentry Program and Department of Corrections. Um, there's a really wonderful model in the state of Missouri where they're using work keys for individuals who are getting um, training to uh, enter the workforce again once they're released. So we hope to see something come out of that. Um, we wanted to make sure that you knew all of the state funded community and technical colleges in our four parishes are now work keys testing sites. That's happened since we started this process. So every parish now has at least one testing site in it, which is very exciting. Um, including Ayers Career College, which is not a public entity, but they, they are very excited about this initiative and work keys. So I, I wanted to quickly go over with those last couple of slides what it means for us to become certified work ready communities. From the time we have our launch this Wednesday, we have two years to meet some goals that we set as a regional group with ACT. Those goals are laid out in the, um, the handout that, um, I'm going to show you a picture of it so you know which one I'm talking about. It looks like this. I think it's probably page three. If you look in the top right hand corner that shows what our goals are where it says workforce goals and actual. So because our high schools have been testing work keys for the last two years we've actually already exceeded those goals. Okay. It says zero percent on this slide right here because we haven't gone live yet that happens Wednesday so on Wednesday that will look completely different. We'll light up differently on the ACT website. It will show the percentage of our goals that have been met. And we're excited that we don't have to worry about that emerging category, even though we certainly do want to see more people getting their work case certificate. The emerging category is high school and college students. The next goal is current uh, workforce, and so that's individuals who are currently working. That means that their employers are having them tested on work keys. The transitioning workforce uh, is unemployed individuals, veterans, persons in adult education programs. Um, and then the last goal that we have is the one I've highlighted, and that's the number of employers supporting the initiative. That's where we know we have the most work to do because very few employers know what work keys is or how to use it in hiring and promotion. So um, we've radically increased the number of employers who so far are supporting this. Our region went from having six when we started to now having 42. So that's just since we've started in January. And employers I'm speaking with do nothing but tell me that they're interested in learning more so we're very hopeful and that is really the purpose of our event on Wednesday is to try to attract as many employers and HR staff as possible who can come and learn about this and then we will follow it up with a series of lunch and learn events where they can come and ask much more detail in their questions um, if I were to say a role that y'all might play in helping this initiative move forward is if you're speaking to employers in your districts and they complain about challenges hiring and retaining employees, please put them in contact with us because we would love for them to learn about this tool and they can see if it might be something that could benefit them in that 
aspect of their business. Um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them, but I just wanted to give an update. And also, your human resources manager, Cheryl McGee, she's part of this team representing Caddo Parish. So, um, um, yeah, she's, she's been a great team member. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. All right. I don't know if it's this, uh, can we actually ask a question in this session? Um, hi, Angie. Uh, sorry, if, if, I sorry. If, I have some, if I have someone who I'd like to, uh, uh, you know, who I'd like to introduce this, pro this, this program to, how would I, uh, where would I direct them? Um, they can contact me after Wednesday. We will have a website that you can point them to. Um, it's, I don't know if the URL is live yet, but it will be North okay. Louisiana Ready the Number Two Work dot org. So, I'll make sure that you all have that, okay. but you can certainly put them in touch with me. I think you have our contact information. I do. Yeah. Okay. But and I'm happy to give you my card. I, I, I've got your contact information. I'll re refer them to you until. Um, next week when the system's out, hopefully up and running. And we are training, we have a number of members of the existing team who represent chambers and community and technical colleges who will be called employer outreach specialists for this initiative. I'm one of them. And we will be training these individuals to be able to sit down with employers who are interested enough to go to step two, which is really trying to learn how to use it in the hiring and promotion process. And so um, we'll have a team of people that we can point them to after that probably grouping them by parish. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? All right. No other commissioners on the board. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. White. Thank okay. you. Thanks. Thank you, Angie. Appreciate it. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Commissioner Cawthon, we have uh, another presenter. We have uh, Mr. Norm Sergeant Norman March from the Shreveport Police Department, the Cattle Lake Patrol. Johnny. And the oh, Cross right. Lake Patrol. Sorry. And he's going to come and give us an update. Uh, I think we had a question. Commissioner Johnson, relative to the subject of the day. Welcome, Sergeant March. We appreciate you being here, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sergeant Norman Sergeant. Uh, March, badge number 869. Good to have you. Right. Good. Good. Yeah. You ready for the questions, or you got a song? Are you going to make a presentation? <coughs> <coughs> well, no, I mean, I, I really. Yeah. Karen called my office, and I have a note that. Um, Something about a, a fence? Yes. yes. Okay. There's a fence in Cross Lake. Hi, Mr. Lake. Johnson, by the way. <laughs> There's a fence in Cross Lake. Mm -hmm. uh, the homeowner put the fence out there to keep people from fish, mm -hmm. fishing on his property line. Mm -hmm. uh, but from my understanding, the lake is not the property of the resident. It's the property of the city of Shreveport. Okay. And so his property ends up <coughs> into the land, and some of that land is actually the city of Shreveport that he maintains. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, he has uh, had some debates with some other people in that area about fishing. Okay. And so I just want to get a, a answer to it. Uh, sure. Fence needs to come down. He needs sure. to know to take the fence down. Okay. And then people know what they need to do from there. All right. First off, the the the, the no wake buoy issue. I think that was another thing too, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. That those were placed this past week. We got them out. Anyway, the fencer. <clears throat> are you talking about the? The one for Liquid Marina, that? No, this one is off of North uh, Lakeshore uh, Drive. You're talking the second mm -hmm. uh, Twin mm -hmm. Bridge. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <clears throat> under under our, our city ordinances that we have when it comes to construction and the, the passage of, of the, the, the water usage and everything, the only thing is that when, when the city has an ordinance in place that you as a property owner, repairing in? property owner is that correct I think that's how I'm pronouncing it right riparian <laughs> and it just says that so to minimize the extent possible uh, to the extent possible excuse me the obstruction of passage in view of the adjoining uh, repeating repeating property owner now when when there are property owners that will put up fencing like at their boathouse to keep right. people from going into their right. boathouse I understand that. Um, where this gentleman has that that goes out there there is i mean you have that section uh, 78 343 which is the uh, area of public use and prohibited and then you have uh 350 78 357 which is about the permits for the boat for the building of boat houses and you have 78 359 which is about the maximum length of piers or more for boat houses and, and they can't go 
go out more than 300 feet whenever we build out there. Um, but there is nothing that, that it says, that, like, for, like, if I were to block your, if you're a property owner, if I block your access, if I, I can't block your ass, a, access to the lake or for, for that usage because you're a property owner. Now, when, like I said, when, reading all through, uh, through all the ordinances, which I've done this past week, when Karen called me, um, I can't find any, anything as far as the city goes when it comes to ordinances as far as, like, restricting for public use and that kind of stuff. I, I just, I, I can't find anything in that. In, in any, the mayor can make an executive order underneath the 78343 um, to establish a, the executive order such uh, other rules and regulations restricting the, the use of Cross Lake. And, and then it says, and as he may find it reasonably necessary. And that's the, the only, you know. So basically as a homeowner that backs up to the lake, now you're saying that they could actually put a fence up to keep people from coming up to their property in the lake. Mm hmm Okay. There's, like I said, there's nothing. If if I if I bit like, are you familiar with Cross Lake at all? Yeah. Okay. Do you know where Permitters is? I use that for example. Uh, Permitters off of uh, Edson. Okay. Okay. Well, it's got a little little slough that runs back in there. You have property owners that right. do all that. Well. And and when when this when this question was asked, I mean that's why I did all this reading. If Mr. Permenter, if he lived in that that same slough, if he wanted to build a like a, a fence, because I'm getting tired of people coming up the end of my channel. And you have from you to, to her as property owners, and and you're Mr. Permenter, and you give each one of them a key for access to unlock to the gate and stuff like that. That there, there is no, I mean, I, I, there, you're not restricting their usage because, again, when we go to the other section of the the construction, you're not you're not obstructing the property owner's pa passage. You know what I'm saying? Right. Does that make sense? I understand about mm -hmm. the property owner's passage, but I'm saying about as a fisherman, mm -hmm. and I want to fish in this area, which is belongs to the city of Shreveport and not to a homeowner. I'm not tied down to the to their mm -hmm. their boat launch deal, their boathouse, mm -hmm. whatever. I'm just in the lake, and so now the lake has been restricted because this fence is here. Mm -hmm. So now I, I can't fish here because this fence. That's what I'm saying. As a as a fisherman with a right. license, I can't fish in this area because it's restricted, and it's restricted by the property owner and not by the city of Shreveport. Right, and and like like I said, reading through state law, reading through our city ordinances and stuff like that, um, there is nothing that, that restricts that 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 says I can't block it. Of course, you, you use common. I mean, I have to use common sense when I'm and I'm looking at the, the fences you're talking about. But where you're talking about the way that that runs, I mean, I don't see how it limits somebody's access. I really don't. Where where that's at? Well, the people who fish typically fish from the bank, mm -hmm. so. Now, because of this fence here, and, and so when the proper owner sees a person on the other side of that fence, mm -hmm. he comes out and starts hollering at the people fishing. Right. You're talking, and they you're, holler right. back at you're, him. You're talking about right past Mallard Bay. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. they holler back at him. And mm -hmm. so now you've got this confrontation over the city of Shreveport water, which is Cross Lake. And right. not, this, not this homeowner. He doesn't own that property that he has inside of that fence. Okay. And so when they're fishing there... You know, you, you get into this altercation, and I'm trying to keep this altercation well, from I understand. to the next level. I understand. Level. I understand. So I just need some kind of... When we're talking about this. property, uh, ownership of property and all that stuff on the lake, when 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 I speak, I'm going to speak of... Uh, the, it's the 172 mean contour line, which is the... Is that? The, the flood, flood stage. Well, where the... If that fence fits in above the 172 or above, above let's say... It's below. It's below? Yes. Okay. Then, yes, it can be... I mean... But like I said, I, I, I can't, I, that, I was stationed out there before I made supervisor. I was stationed out there. I know the, uh, the exact fence you're talking about now. I that mean, that mm -hmm. piece of property mm -hmm. from where he has the deck coming out into the water mm -hmm. and probably about 60, 80 feet mm -hmm. going toward the house, it's below the 172, which right. means that it's a part of the city of Shreveport's property. Mm -hmm. Well, he believes it is his, and so now he has put that fence there and he maintains all that. But just like with all the other homeowners who bag up to the lake, mm -hmm. you know, depending on the level across lake, 
depends on how much backyard you got. Right. Yes. And so. And know, the, and and when even you're though you maintain it, you might not have it right. the whole year. A, 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 another thing about the about when you're re reading about our order like that, when you're talking about that, that 172 line, if I have 40 feet of in the water to the 172 line, let's say. There is nothing saying that you cannot build a coffer dam and reclaim your property. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it just, but that should address that. But with, a, with the that fence that's been there, I mean, I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, and I mean, I will, I, I, if somebody t tells me that we have to tell him that he has to take it down, then I, then that's what I'll have to do. I mean, you know, okay. but well, there's well, nothing. My next step is I will get with Michael Corbin and the rest mm -hmm. of the city councilmen mm -hmm. and, and let them come up with some legislation. Yeah, because there's that. nothing in the ordinance. What I'm saying is that there's nothing in the ordinances okay. and that I can find except no for that one. And I, just, I just needed you to do mm -hmm. that part to make sure that you're going to be doing your enforcement. I need them to legislate. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we'll work it. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fine. And that works for me, sir. You want me to give you this? Yeah, if you don't mind. No, I, I don't mind at all. Okay. You don't mind if I step up your Come on. I appreciate all the hard work you did. And <coughs> now I'll get with the legislative side. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You need no, That's it, sir. Okay. Thank you, Sergeant March. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Dr. Wilson, you got anything else? <laughs> uh, Commissioner Johnson, I also provided you some pictures that, of that business yes. company, sir. Mm -hmm. If you need them, let me know. But Thank we you. We have sufficient pictures going forward. Okay. And um, oh. that, that concludes my report. I, I have a presentation I can give you on Thursday. Okay. About what's going on with the transformation of animal services. Okay. Uh, we'll do that Thursday. Okay. All right. And we'll move to our next item. Next, we move to commission remarks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do we have any at this point? Commissioner Lenny Johnson? Yes. Uh, I can't Lennon remember. Lenny Johnson Day, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> 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 I can't remember um, from the last meeting, but did. Did Henry give me an update on uh, affordable fence? Yes, sir. I he said did. he was going to get back with me to something else. He came before you, sir, and gave me an update. Okay. Mm -hmm. you remember that? You was Lyndon Johnson State that day about five minutes. <laughs> I just want to make sure that we, we keep this ball moving because yes, sir. He says this has been going on way too long. And if somebody was a law abiding citizen, they would have been faced with a whole bunch of stuff. Yes, and sir. I don't want what's going on with this gentleman to impede what we're yes, supposed, supposed to be doing. Is so Henry here? I think, I think uh, yes, he's here. Henry, keep I, that ball I, moving. That's all I we're going to tell you. <laughs> I, I think what, what Attorney Bernstein said was the gentleman that who the issue that hand dealing with is incarcerated. Exactly. And that shouldn't <laughs> stop the ball from rolling. I mean. Yeah, so he's filing he's found legal stuff from jail. Yeah, but to me, that still shouldn't keep the ball from rolling. But Okay. Uh, I think that's about it. I think so. Until I think of something else. We got the UK speed reports later on. You can get it again. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Moving to our next item, uh, President's report. Uh, don't have anything at this time. I can't think of anything. I know there's something, but I'll, I will skip it. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, we have no old business. We move to new business. It's only case P1218 in regards to ordinance number 5783 of 2018. <clears throat> the uh, zoning of property located at the end of Singleton Road. 1,025 feet south of Pine Hill Road, Cattle Parish from RMHP, Residential Manufactured Home Park, to R15, Single Family Residential District. Moved to advance. Uh, second. second. Got a motion by Commissioner Lynn Johnson. It's seconded by Commissioner Matthew um, Lynn to move this to Thursday. Please vote. I'm on the board. Okay, let me. I need uh, Mr. Sweeney to come up to, to say what is this because I thought we already voted on something in this particular area but there's something else here i see the gentleman has decided he wants to take in some more area for the subdivision that he plans and he needed to add on an additional area and rezone it to the r15 zoning that he's looking for so how many additional homes are you trying to put in there? i believe it would be an additional two or three lots two or three lots 
adjacent to the ones we disapproved? Yes, you've had a series where you've done two zoning cases and we've done a plat with the MPC. This is a third case or a fourth case for him for the purpose of expanding that area for his subdivision. Is that around that uh, cul-de-sac? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. You good? Yes, that's all I want. Okay, let's please vote at this time. That passes 11 0. Then the next item. Authorized resolution number 44 2018, authorizing Pedal Parish Fire District number one to issue and sell and deliver in the name of the district fire district revenue bonds in an amount not exceeding $1 million. One or more series for the purpose of constructing a fire station, seeking state bond commission approval, providing for the employment of bond <coughs> council. Move to Thursday. Second. Motion by chair, seconded by Commissioner Matthew Lynn. Lyndon, you got some questions? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, back to the Lyndon Johnson show. And <laughs> no, I'm just, I just want to make sure that uh, we cover everything, right? So, so are they seeking million dollars of bonds? Do we know where this new fire station is supposed to be? I don't know, but if you want me to get in touch with the... Um, I, would, I would like them to be here for... Tip Dan Cotton. Yeah, we'll yeah. get in touch with Dan Cotton. Todd, can you do that for me? Uh, Have him here. So, just with the so we can we can get some answers to you know what's going to be done, uh, how it's going to impact the district because uh, it's covering District One and District Two of Carroll Parish. So I just want to make sure that you know the district is covered you know well. I'll uh, if you'd like to, I'll give him give me the information. I'll send an email, but I'll also request he come Thursday. Let's do that. Okay. I appreciate it. Right, please vote. Municipal coverage in your area. Yes. That they merged them together. Passes. Nothing zero. Going on to the next item. Authorized resolution number 45 supporting appointments. Cattle Parish Commissioner. Move to Thursday. Second. I'd like to speak on that for just five seconds. Um, five seconds. Go I got a motion by Commissioner Lynn. Uh, Matthew Lynn, seconded by Stormy right. Gage Watts. Yes. Um, go ahead. If any of y'all want to get on a committee or want to swap some of the committees that you're on, please get with Mr. Hopkins before Thursday and we can make those changes this coming Thursday. Thank you. That's it. All right. Please vote. Ooh. <laughs> that was good. Six seconds. That passed 11 0 moves to the next item. Authorized resolution number 46, 2018, recognized and proclaimed June 19th. 2018 is Sickle Cell Awareness Day. So moved. Second, Second motion by Commissioner Watts. Seconded by Commissioner Gerald Bowman. Uh, let's move that to item to Thursday. Please vote. I'm on the board to speak. Okay, go ahead. Just because we won't be here Thursday, thank you, Mr. President. I would like to remind everyone that tomorrow is World Sickle Cell Awareness Day. To wear something red, do some research like you wonderful colleagues have done in the past about sickle cell awareness. But let's make it public this time since we won't be at work and share it on social media and make sure that we let the world know that we're involved in World Sickle Cell Awareness Day. Thank you. Thank you. Please vote at this time. And that passes 11 0. Next item. Authorized Cattle Fresh Administrator to sign a letter of support uh, for the Swepco Wind Catcher Energy Project. Make, make, a motion, resources. make a motion that this be moved to the Natural Resources Committee. Second, I'd like Second to by speak. Commissioner uh, Matthew Lynn. Uh, Matthew, go ahead. Um, if y'all would, if you have hey, any questions me. concerning this, please get those to me oh, as dear. soon as possible, including any constituents that have any questions no. concerning this. Get that to me. I think we have a polymer, parliamentary procedure because it's the maker really of the motion has the right to talk first. Then I'm whoever's on the board goes second and then third. I'm but I'm, I'm gonna let you go this time. I'm gonna let you know that's that's what y'all told me the other day. It's the uh, <laughs> we're turning back over to Lyndon Johnson. If you no, go ahead. Let it go. Um, and so please give me those questions. I'd like to be able to forward those to Mr. Corbin so that he can come to the meeting prepared. Thank you. M Lynn M L I N N at Cato.org. Thank you. LB. 
Yeah, I just thought I heard Michael Corbin say that they have a meeting Wednesday. Thursday. Yeah. Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. And we don't meet to Thursday. Yeah. So even if we voted the vote Thursday, it would still be after there what he needs for Wednesday. Is it going to be okay if we send this to the committee and bring it to you later? Maybe a, a week or so for you know, a couple of weeks probably. It'll be quick. Come on up, Michael. Um, I, you I know, still got the floor, though. You know go ahead. <laughs> so can you explain if we postpone this for a little while, does that impact what you're trying to do? We are uh, of an understanding that the Public Service Commission intends to vote on this uh, Wednesday. We're all elected officials, and we know how, how that can go. It could be that something comes up and they postpone it again. They postponed it previously. Uh, so, you know, if you want to work this through committee, uh, certainly understand that, and we will accept the letter of support whenever we can get it. If there was a way to get it prior to Wednesday, that would be uh, preferable uh, to us. Okay. You mentioned uh, in your presentation that we couldn't ask questions, but you mentioned about uh, economic development. Uh, how is that? How will it that is. impact cattle payers? When we go out and we talk to companies, whether it's uh, NLEP or it's the parish or the city, or someone comes in and wants information, you know, they're going to look at if they're a power user, they're going to look at what are the electric rates. And for years, we were one of the lowest areas in the country. Um, we are beginning to creep up slowly. And so that's one of the reasons that we want to uh, bring in wind energy to eliminate a fuel charge. The other thing that we're seeing is a number of, man of uh, manufacturers, corporations, as well as universities and even some cities and other municipalities have set sustainability goals uh, dealing, dealing with their power usage and, and um, you know, things moving forward. There's really no way to meet any of those goals unless you're bringing in wind power, solar power, uh, something other than the traditional uh, generation methods. Okay, and my last question. Will this create jobs or eliminate jobs long term? Well, it's going to create jobs certainly in the short term because um, what our suppliers are telling us is that about 30% of the jobs associated with constructing the windmills and constructing the transmission line that will be uh, required through uh, Oklahoma from the Panhandle to Tulsa where it connects to the SWEPCO transmission uh, network uh, that about 30 percent of those jobs will be in the four state area. Uh, there's a company out of Alexandria that makes our transmission towers. Uh, we don't know for sure if how much of that work is going to be done in state versus some of their other locations throughout the U.S. and General Electric who makes the wind turbines has a facility outside of New Orleans, and we would expect that they would be uh, ramping up because we're going to be buying 800 wind turbines. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> I'm done. Okay, um, Commissioner Chavez. Excuse me. Oh, whoa, 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 Lewis Johnson. Commissioner Lewis Johnson. Um, thank you, Mr. <laughs> President. Um, we've had the um, opportunity to listen to um, Mr. Corbin come before our body, as well as the other representative from SWEPCO. Uh, we've had an opportunity for, if there are any concerns for constituents in that time frame, to have uh, presented questions. And of course, there will be other opportunities as well. Mm -hmm. I know that I've not received any. Uh, I've had enough time to do um, a little research myself as it relates to um, kind of bring myself up to speed as far as um, getting a better understanding as it relates to what we're dealing with here. And if taking it to committee will be quick, I think voting on it now would be quicker. Um, of course, I will support whatever uh, we come up with, but I would um, make a motion that we consider voting for it um, on today. It's what my position is. Thank you. Okay. Um, Commissioner Chauvin? Uh, I'm going to yield my questions to uh, the committee. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. And, and, and the reason um, I asked this to go to committee, I knew that I had so, several questions, and uh, I was trying to get in touch with Commissioner Lamb, but he was out of the country last week. Uh, otherwise, I'd probably got back in touch with you. But the thing that I had was, is this on a timeline? And I was told that it was not. So uh, now here it is. So I'm sorry, but I think there are some questions that need to go to committee, and hopefully we can get this resolved here um, after the committee meets. Okay? Certainly appreciate it. And I'm we can't do anything today anything. anyway. So <laughs> it'll be Thursday, which would be too late anyway. So Commissioner Atkins, thank you, uh, Mr. Corbin. Uh, Obviously, there's advantages to this project. Um, 
could you speak to some of the perceived disadvantages and, and which groups are currently pushing back on the project? Certainly we have some um, oil and gas folks in Oklahoma that have uh, put some opposition up. Uh, currently we generate electricity with primarily with natural gas and we have some coal-fired plants as well. You know, looking ahead, we don't know what uh, the environmentalist folks are going to look at, but there begins to be more and more attacks on coal-fired plants and, uh, you know, related pollution um, conceptions and things like that. Um, adding wind to our mix, we feel like, is a very cost-effective move because there's no fuel charge. Mm -hmm. It's very efficient. Um, we see no indication that we would want to remove any of our natural gas generating facilities. Uh, what we may be doing is scaling back some of our coal uh, facilities in the future. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. And Commissioner Lewis Johnson? Yes, I, I wasn't quite finished, but I did not um, pose my question. I had a two-part question. Um, one, Mike, was that I wanted to ask you, could you um, give us the local bodies that have provided a, a letter of support to you at this time? Sure. The city of Shreveport, the city of Bossier, the town of Old City, the village of Belcher, Caddo Parish Port Commission, Caddo Bossier Port Commission, Barksdale Forward, the Manufacturers Council, Calumet, and I make a presentation tomorrow to Caddo Parish School Board. Okay. Thank you. I was going to ask that information, and then I was going to make a formal motion, a formal motion that we would uh, vote on it today. You can't. Thank you. You can't make a motion. Yeah, you talk. Yeah, you can't. After you talk, you can't make a motion. You have to make the motion at the first. I make a motion that we would vote on it today. <laughs> you can't. You have to get back on the line. Uh, thank you. Commissioner Bowman. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yes, sir. I'm sorry, I, just, I appreciate I had, uh, you. A question and a, a comment. Uh, my first co uh, question. So this is why I wanted us all to go to committee. This is all part of going to committee because now we open it up. So That's true, <laughs> but you know how we do. Well, it wasn't supposed to be on the, I don't know how it got on the agenda because it was going to go to committee. <laughs> Somebody stuck it on the agenda, and that's why we wanted to go to committee. Okay. So, so <clears throat> all right. So let's, t let's talk about that. <laughs> if it goes to committee, are we really being advantageous or is it what we're at a disadvantage? That's I, I, I think faces. I think that the idea behind it was to go to the committee, let everybody vet it out, have the committee come back in here and, and make the recommendation. Because I was told we were not under a timeline, and I was just going to put it on the committee, and it got stuck on the agenda. And once it gets stuck on the agenda, then we all get around this horseshoe, and everybody has a hundred million questions. Right. And that's why we're sitting out here vetting, it, and then we're going to vet it out of the committee. So I don't know. Okay. That's the I would I would rather go to committee and let's vet it out. Okay, I mean, we can do that. I just don't understand. I'm kind of like Commissioner Johnson, in a way. Mr. Corbin, everybody has been down here and talked about this. I've done research. Most opposition um, comes from the people of Oklahoma, and that's because they don't like the actual setup of the wind turbines in the area because they have open plain area, and that's really the main controversy. Arkansas has already given, what, $4.5 billion okay for it as well. Yes. So uh, my real question is what – how is this going to hurt us if we do support it? And if no one can tell me that, then I'll make the substitute motion that we do vote. Again, you can't make a substitute motion yeah, after you already talked. Well, you have to make the motion <laughs> when you get on when you get on the board. <laughs> so, Commissioner Mike Miller, do you have not spoken yet? I make the motion we vote on it right now. I second. Yes. <laughs> That's democracy. <laughs> All done. right, that dies for a lack of second. We'll so, no, I second. <laughs> I second it. I second it. I see how okay. this is being slanted. <laughs> All right, I have a substitute motion by Commissioner That's Mike Middleton and seconded by uh, Stormy Gage Watts to vote on it right now. And we have everybody on the board. Uh, sure. This is a this is a meet, work session meeting only sets the agenda for Thursdays. So I think the motion. All right. Well. The, okay. Okay. The thing. The motion is to move it to Thursday. Okay. okay. That's what I'm pretty sure. Okay. Okay. My motion, my motion is voted. Is Excuse me. Point of order. Mine was a vote on the issue today. Okay. Can't do that today. So. Okay. His, move move his, it forward his, then. His, 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 so his motion is dead. It's okay. No, All right. No. 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 I can correct it. It's just a point of order. <laughs> 
I so so what's your motion? My motion is to move it to Thursday. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I can do uh, that. <laughs> uh, I'm going to move down. Fraser, Attorney Fraser, I'm going to let you speak. Do we have something? Are we out no, of that's, that's what I wanted to, to bring up. Okay. Um, I don't know who all has spoken and who has not spoken. Um, you already spoke, man, if you did. No. You did not speak? Okay, Commissioner Lynn. Um, the fact that the deadline that we're trying to meet is Wednesday and that we wouldn't be able to vote until Thursday and the fact that I'm willing to have a committee meeting as soon as Thursday or the very first time that we could have one um, makes makes voting to move it to Thursday sort of a moot point in my scenario. So I will vote to send it to committee. Also with that, I do have some questions as far as EPA and air attainment. I know that we have been right at the threshold of air attainment levels for our community for Northwest Louisiana, meaning that um, I don't see it happening in this presidency, but maybe in future presidencies, that if the air attainment levels were ever moved one notch up, this area of, the, of Louisiana would be out of air quality attainment levels, which means we couldn't build another factory, a plant could not come into this community. However, the magnolia plant that burns lignite that's mined out of DeSoto Parish is the principal cause of mercury in the air above Caddo Parish, which if they were to decrease that, if SWEPCO was to decrease that, then our air attainment levels would be much better. And these are all facts and figures um, that Mr. Corbin brought up in reference to they might decrease that. Now it was a might decrease that, but I would like, I would like on behalf of the community a guarantee that they would decrease that, that if they put up windmills and these windmills produce so much power that SWEPCO would then decrease the use of coal of their coal burning plant in Magnolia, Texas that blows over Caddo Parish that lowers our air quality level. And see, these are the types of things that I think that we should be looking for. If we're, if we're putting a resolution of support out there in favor of this, then we need to, to ask for something. And this is something that would benefit everybody in the community. And so I would, for that reason, I'd like for this to go to committee. Thank you. Commissioner Chavez. Thank you, Chair. Uh, colleagues, there's an old saying, act in uh, haste, repent in leisure. And uh, as, we've, as we've just identified, if we- What is the saying? If, act in haste, <laughs> repent in leisure. Okay. We're in no hurry to, to vote on this because his meeting happens on Wednesday. So even if we vote to move to Thursday, it's a moot point as, as has been stated. Um, Dr. Wilson wrote this letter and I, I would have liked if you would have got with the group to let us know that this is a going to be on the agenda and maybe your thoughts on this and the things that you have researched. Hold on one second. Um, and I think it would be advantageous for us to put it to the committee so that there's obviously a lot of questions. The fact that we're still sitting on the same topic uh, 29 minutes later, we probably need to send it to the committee and discuss it because there's a lot of questions. Uh, so there's really no sense in hurrying this up to Thursday to vote on it when there's also uh, a lot of objections. So moving it to committee, I think, would be a good idea. So I'm going to vote no to move, move this to Thursday, and I would like to see it go to committee. That's all, guys. Lyndon? Yes, uh, I guess the point that I'm going to make is um, Michael just talked about at least seven or nine different other entities that have written a letter of support. So even if you don't give a letter of support, based upon the letters he already has, which is most of the governmental bodies around us, your, letter, your, letter, your none letter really ain't gonna make a difference. So it's either you get on board with everybody else or you stay off the train. <laughs> and that's basically <coughs> what we're boiling down to because you already got letters of support all the way around us. And so just to sit back and have another committee meeting to talk about it is a waste of time. I mean, we should have been having this meeting before today so that we can p progress this. Because he came two weeks ago, we could have had a meeting in between that time. But we didn't, we sat on it. So other agencies have went on and they wrote a letter of support. And so what are we gonna do? And then, then to put a stipulation on about you gotta shut down a plant or reduce the rate of a plant and you're the only governing body that's gonna say that. I mean, they gonna, SWEPCO gonna look at that and say, okay, don't file 13. 
because nobody else is, is even mentioning that. They've already written their love support. So, I mean, what we're trying to do here is really crazy. Just go ahead and just vote today, yay or nay. You're on the train or you're not. Thank you. Okay, you done? I'm done. I said thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to call for the question, but no one else. Yeah. Dr. Wilson, you need to say anything. Oh, yes, sir. I, I just wanted to show Commissioner uh, Chavez. If you see it on the agenda, you can bet your bottom dollar I talk to somebody before I put it on there. I'm sorry? I said, if you see this on the agenda, uh, you can bet your bottom dollar that I spoke to someone before I put it on there. Can you talk to me? <laughs> I would have uh, to be spoken with as well. I didn't. The, th the thing on it was, um, it did, you know, you were here a couple of weeks ago and I was just working on trying to get it with the committee and it was my understanding there was no time limit on it. So right, that's, uh, that's, and, and, and uh, that's Matthew right. was out of the country until yesterday. So that's correct. So I'd, I'd been trying to talk to Matthew, but first time I talked to him was today. So yeah. we call you my anyway, all right. So let's see. Um, substitute motion is to move it to Thursday. If you're for that, please vote now. Move it to Thursday. That passes. Okay, that passes. Let's see, it passes what, six, six to five? five? To move it, that passes, yeah. Oh, hang on. LB, I got the floor, okay? Oh, cool. The president is supposed to, <laughs> parliamentary <laughs> procedures, the president calls but the vote. Like so was, that passes six to five. It'll go to Thursday, okay? All right, moving to our next item. Next, we move to communicate the committee reports. We'll see an attachment to uh, commissioners and an appointment for the IDB. A reappointment. Move to, move to Thursday. Second. Second. Not for today, but for you to read that. Okay, do we need a motion on that? No, sir. Okay, I need no motion. Just your information. All right, uh, Commissioner <laughs> Lyndon Johnson, no. it's your day. Uh-uh. <laughs> I thought, I thought somebody was gonna make I'll a motion. I was now. gonna actually basically <laughs> postpone, but if they not, you can't make a motion. On it, it's no big deal. Okay, so you don't need to say anything. Okay, um, I have one late arrival on citizens' comments. We're moving to that. John Settle, Mr. Settle. <laughs> I've heard about committees that don't meet, and I went to two committee meetings that nobody else got to go to, so I'll pass it. Okay. All right, Commissioner Ouch. Stormy Gage Watt. Ouch. I was just going to uh, <laughs> catch your breath. <laughs> Let her. I'm gonna put I was under communicates. Okay. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Stormy Gage Watt under communicates. Please yes, sir. Ahead. Thank you. I was just going to give a brief report. We met today, Juvenile Justice Committee met today, um, and we developed a written plan of action for relative to the Raise the Age Act of 2016, and we um, got some updates. Um, Clay, Director Walker, will be giving the information to our clerk, and he will be making sure that each commissioner gets that plan of action so that you know exactly where we are with that. We also discussed some um, juvenile alternatives and some other homes that are available here in Caddo Parish. That's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Commissioner Stormy Gage Wallace. Appreciate, appreciate, appreciate your active role in being on the chairmanship of that Move juvenile adjourn. justice committee. You're doing a good job. Thank so you. to adjourn. We are adjourned. Hey, Stephen. I would too. Take care. Thank you.